You're watching 11 Alive Morning News. 11 minutes of nonstop news starts now. Thanks for staying with us. Your time now is 647. For the next 11 minutes on 11 Alive, we will bring you nonstop news, weather, and traffic. Everything you need to know to help you get out the door. All eyes on the state capitol today as lawmakers are in their final hours of the legislative session. Key bills that could affect you and your family if they become law. And the election interference case is back in court. What a judge will consider when it comes to former President Trump and one of his co-defendants. Clouds in place right now, but no rain coming out of those clouds. In fact, they'll get out of the way. We'll get the sunshine in, but it will be breezy and cooler. I'll let you know how cool coming up. We're clearing trouble out of the East Expressway. I-20 westbound between Panola and Wesley Chapel. Plenty of volume. We'll get the details in my next report. We are kicking off your 11 minutes of nonstop news in East Atlanta. Atlanta police say a man is recovering after a uh, shooting overnight. This is video of the scene near the Earl Bar on Flat Shoals Avenue. Officers say the man was taken to Grady Hospital. This morning, lawmakers are back under the Gold Dome for the last day of this year's legislative session. Ariana Manis is joining us live now. Ariana, one of many bills lawmakers have passed would put limits on land ownership. That's right, Aisha and Chira. I'm live in front of the state capitol where SB 420 is one of several bills that lawmakers have worked through in the final days of this session. One bill that's being seen as controversial. Now the bill prevents anyone from purchasing or leasing agriculture land or land next to a military base if they're considered an agent of a foreign adversary. The bill would ban agents of China, Cuba, Iran, North Korea and Russia who are not U.S. citizens or legal residents from owning farmland. It does not apply to residential property. Now, GOP state lawmakers, they say the measure aims at protecting the nation's food supply and national security from foreign adversaries. And one Democrat that we spoke to argues that this bill can lead to discrimination based on someone's nation of origin, specifically against Asian Americans. Now, the bill po passed both the House and Senate chambers. It now goes to Governor Kim desk for his signature. We reached out to his office to see if he'll sign it. They tell us it's still under consideration. Reporting for the state capitol, I'm Ariana Manis for 11 Alive. A hearing happens today just hours from now in the Fulton County election interference case. The judge is set to hear three motions filed by attorneys for former President Trump and former Georgia Republican Party Chairman David Schaefer. Trump claims his conduct was protected by First Amendment speech, and Schaefer argues he was following the advice of legal counsel and is asking the court to take language out of the indictment related to false electoral college votes. We have a breakdown of those motions on 11alive.com. We're going to also have crews in court for you today streaming that hearing live on 11 Alive Plus. Go ahead and download that for free right now to your Apple, Roku, or Amazon Fire devices. Time now 6.50. This morning, Braves fans have to wait another day for the start of the team's season. Opening day was initially planned for today, but it's now postponed to tomorrow because of some weather issues in Philly. So first pitch still set for 3.05 Friday. The Braves watch party also postponed. It's on for tomorrow. It's an all afternoon block party in the Summer Hill neighborhood along Georgia Avenue. There'll be live food, uh, music, drinks, free parking, lots open all starting at three o'clock. And that was a look at your headlines this morning. Chesley getting us ready to head out the door. Less pollen. Welcome news. Yes, very low yesterday. Surprisingly low, right down to nine. You know, a single digit in March. Really unheard of for us, but that rain came through and helped to wash that uh, out of the air. And so that's good. Low, well, literally none as far as the grass and the weeds are concerned. Low as far as mold is concerned. And so we'll see it bounce back. Oh, yeah, yeah, it'll bounce back. We had the 4,000 count, 3,000 count. So you know it's going to get right back up there again as we dry out. Those winds start to blow around a little bit like it will today. And uh, we'll see that number start to rise a bit. You're looking at clouds overhead right now. Notice there's a little bit of green up here to the north over Union Towns County, uh, White County. No. Not reaching the ground, not worried about that. In fact, we'll see these clouds break up as we head toward the afternoon. Temperatures are starting off in the 50s for the most part. I got a couple 40s in here, like Conyers at 49. You're at 51 degrees in McDonough. 50 right now in Noonan, 50 in Peachtree, uh, no, I'm sorry, in Fayetteville. You got Peachtree City at 52 degrees. 49 in Dallas over in uh, Paulding County. 
Temple at 48, 51 degrees in Marietta, 49 degrees in Mapleton. You got 51 degrees in Tucker over in DeKalb County, 51 in downtown Atlanta, 50 in 50 degrees right now in East Point. Light jacket, you'll need that for today, or at least a light sweater because temperatures will be cooler. Only 67 for the afternoon high, along with that wind that's going to be out there. It's going to make it feel pretty cool. Northwest winds anywhere between 15 and 20 miles per hour. Gust could be in the 50 mile per hour range. And we'll see that start to amp up as we head through the afternoon. They'll die out later on tonight, and with skies clearing out, that's going to allow that temperature to begin to fall off. And so uh, we have uh, fair skies or we'll have fair skies by this afternoon as high pressure continues to build into our forecast area. We'll make it mighty nice, especially as we head toward the weekend. That's where we'll start to see those temperatures really begin to warm up today. Only in the 60s tomorrow, we'll be seeing those temperatures heat up into the 70s. We're going to stay right there as we head through the weekend, looking at mid 70s by Saturday, upper 70s by the time we get to Easter Sunday. So that'll be mighty nice. Our forecast track model shows those clouds getting out of the way and notice the sunshine in place and we're going to hold on to it really for the rest of the weekend. You're looking at nothing but sunshine and those temperatures really starting to warm up again near 80 degrees for the high temperature on Easter Sunday. How about 80s? We'll have those around as we start the work week next week. We're going to hold it right there for Tuesday as go. So clouds will begin to build in and we'll have a chance for rain by the middle of next week and that temperature will start to cool back down 71 degrees by next Wednesday. Crash. All right, Chesley, appreciate that. A little bit of a good news, bad news scenario out on the East Expressway. Yeah, you got plenty of traffic out here. Boy, look at that pretty sunrise coming up. We did have a wreck, I-20 westbound right near Wesley Chapel. It was basically between Panola and Wesley Chapel, but the good news is they moved it off to the right. The bad news is very congested. It's kind of a coin flip. You want to run to Covington Highway? I say go for it. Eh, about 33 minutes, though, as you're rolling out of Conyers. Yeah, it's going to be kind of a conditioned red, so just be prepared for some brake lights. Once you get by Wesley Chapel, Chapel and 285, you're in much, much better shape. The West Expressway is still quiet. That's all about volume coming in from Douglasville. Looks like about what 20 minutes there from Highway 92. That's not bad. And hello, I 85. We knew you'd be crowded. Cheryl, no doubt. All right, taking a live look at Baltimore this morning as the search for clues continues. Federal investigators are piecing together what caused that cargo ship to crash and bring down the key bridge. NBC's Bree Jackson has the latest from Washington. Bree. Four people are still missing this morning, and there are also concerns about hazardous materials. Good morning. Crews in Baltimore have moved from a recovery mission to a salvage operation. So far, the bodies of at least two construction workers were recovered from the scene of the bridge collapse, as was the ship's black box. The NTSB is analyzing the data for clues. Meanwhile, cleanup is also underway. The Coast Guard says 56 containers on board the ship had more than 700 tons of corrosive, flammable materials. Some of those containers were breached. Now, this incident is expected to have a significant impact on the supply chain. President Biden is working with the Coast Guard and the U.S. Transportation Secretary on response efforts. The crew of the ship is still on board, and federal investigators have started interviewing them. This investigation is expected to last one or even two years. It's estimated replacing the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore could cost at least $2 billion. The Biden administration pledges to help Baltimore for as long as it takes. Back to you. Bree, thank you. This morning, brothers are being held are without bond facing charges in a string of cold rape cases from nearly 40 years ago. 62 year old David Briney and 59 year old Jeffrey Briney collectively faced 49 charges in cases dating back to the 80s. Authorities say the cases spanned across Fulton, DeKalb and Cobb counties. This morning, the Gainesville community is honoring Jeremy Medina. He was killed in an accident at the batting cages late last year. Jeremy was a senior on Gainesville High School's team, and now the school is launching the Jeremy Medina Memorial Scholarship to support one senior who embodies his work ethic and attitude. To help raise funds, the school is raffling an ATV on April 15th. It is 656 now. More is being revealed this morning about a plan to transform 15 acres of industrial land and warehouses in the Bankhead community. It's going to be located on Donnelly Hollowell Parkway. According to our partners at the Atlanta Business Chronicle, it's going to include 1600 residential units and offices along with commercial space. This site will be run by the Atlanta Beltline West Side Trail. According to the Chronicle, because of how close the project is to the Beltline, the developer has to set aside units for affordable housing. This is what that could look like. 
15% will be made for people making about $57,000. 10% for households earning just under $43,000. And 5% will be for people making around $21,000. It's all based on one person household and the area median income from last year. According to the Chronicle, the project is still in the planning phases. Today in Clayton County, Marta wants to hear from you about plans to develop a bus rapid transit line. The Marta Rapid South Lake plan proposes connections to the South Lake Mall and to the airport. You can give your feedback during a meeting from 630 till 8 o'clock tonight. It's at the Southern Regional Medical Center. Well, we're looking at uh, temperatures starting to warm up a little bit as we head toward noon. Starting off in the 40s, we get up to 58 degrees by noon. Those winds will be kicking up out there just a little bit. A bit breezy, anywhere between uh, 15, 20 miles per hour. 67 degrees will be our afternoon high. We'll have mostly sunny skies out there. Staying clear tonight, we'll see fair skies by 6. You're looking at 63 degrees by then. Crash. All right, Chesley, no major red alerts to leave you with. That's the good news. But yeah, you do got that heavy congestion from Lithonia. The wreck at Wesley Chapel sits off to the right. I'll get you updated 726 as you look live at 85 out of Gwinnett. Let's end it on this adorably cute note. The NICU babies at Wellstar Cobb are in the Easter spirit. These little sweet photos, the nurses dress the babies up to help boost the family spirits and make sure no one missed out on the Easter bunny. Oh my goodness. You know, my dad, my, my dad and my husband both don't want me to look at pictures like that because they think they'll, they'll want another baby. I didn't yeah, see any bonnets. I, I can see it. Bonnets. <laughs> babies don't have on the <laughs> Easter bonnet. Get over it. Oh, the man in his bonnet. Uh. Oh, gosh. <laughs>